one of the essential things we need to configure to create a working safeguard configuration is an account. As you know, accounts need to be configured and they need to be linked to assets, so because the account must be living on an asset somehow. And to do this, you just simply click log in with your administrative user and go to the appropriate entry in the menu that is called accounts. And you're going to see a couple of accounts maybe already in your configuration, as is here in my test environment, but maybe or maybe not, so it's initially empty. And if you configure some account here, just simply click on the plus sign, and then you have to select an asset. So if you don't have created an asset before, you need to create an asset first. So in this case, I use this my asset, my dummy asset, click on the OK, and create some kind of account. And this is just simply a name I have to choose for this. And it is important to know that this name I choose must be the name of the actual account that is already present on the asset. So don't choose some kind of label here. It needs to match the account name on the physical or virtual or whatever asset you are managing here. And you have to assign the uh, profile depending on the uh, partition uh, membership it has. And you can enable that this account is requestable for password or session management. In this case, I just simply make it enable for password requests and then click on add account. What's important to know is if you define an asset in that pane over here, it is always treated as a local account on that asset. If you want to manage directory-based accounts, you need to discover these accounts via a discovery run, and then you can manage them later in your access request policies and entitlements. So don't try to configure a directory-based account with something like domain name, backslash, account name uh, here in that pane. This will simply not work. And again, one of the essential building blocks of a safeguard configuration is an entitlement. And linked to that entitlement, is it is an access request policy. So to configure these things, you click simply click on the entitlement with your administrative user using the Windows-based client. And then you can create something like an entitlement. Entitlement, just click on plus, give it a name like password request, passwords, for, for instance. and Maybe you want to set up some kind of time restrictions, but if not, just leave it alone. And then simply click on Add Entitlements. In this case, you now have an entitlement created course, uh, called Passwords. And if you click on it, all these numbers will show zero over here. So you don't have any users assigned to that uh, entitlement. You don't have any accounts inside that entitlement. You don't have any assets and you don't have any policies. So in this case, it is just an empty container. To make it really work, you have to fill all these numbers with appropriate values. And to do so, the first thing is to create an access request policy. The access request policy describes what you really want to do or what a user is allowed to request. So to create an access request policy, simply click on plus after you have selected this and give it a name like my password request because I will now try to set up some access request policy for a password. Select password in the access type. Maybe you want to change this value as well if you have find it useful. Otherwise, simply advance with next to scope and now click on the scope and select add account. And the account in this case is this my account, my demo account I have created earlier. Click on plus and you're going to see this little triangle that may show up somewhere. We're going to tackle this later and click on next for the requester. The requester is the user who places that request. And in this form, you can configure what the requester needs to do or which information the requester needs to provide to pass this workflow. In this case, maybe require a command. You can have the duration changed or whatever, any modification as you like. Maybe just leave it pretty, pretty simple. Just don't select anything. 
click on next. If you want to have some kind of approval step, you can configure this here. We're going to tackle this later in much more detail. So just click on auto approved. The next goes for the reviewer. This is pretty much additional step in the workflow. You can enable or disable or, or not. Or you can, and if you don't want to have it, just let it, let it be on not required and then advance to the access config. And in the access config, you now can define if the password needs is checked after you check it in, or if you want to have allow simultaneous access or other options, just leave it as it is and click on next. Session settings do not apply because it's not a session, it's a password policy. So this is grayed out. You cannot select anything. And of course, you can have a time restriction for this individual access request policy as well. We just leave this unconfigured for simplicity and just click on next and click create access request policy. Maybe I just have to get back to this just not to skip the last point in the configuration chain. This was about emergency. Emergency access is something that you can configure if you want that a requester is able to request this account you're managing here when there is a couple of approvals required, but that you are in an emergency situation and you have, do not have the time for approvals. If you declare this then as some kind of emergency access, when you do the request, you will just simply jump over all these approvals and will get access to the account instantly. Play around with it, try it out. You're going to see how this works. Okay, I don't need it anymore. I don't need this here, so I just simply use this one. And just coming back for this little triangle to make this really work, go back to the account click the account where this triangle is and it says no password has been set for this account. So you may know that the password is recorded inside Safeguard and it will be compared to the actual account password and then if uh, for to check or if you uh, set a password after you use this it will rotate the password, it will set the password on the account and it will record it in the internal database as well. Because this password has not been set, I'm going to set one here and I just set the password manually because I know this is a fake account so it will not have any effect on this but this may of course be different if you really have some real managed account on a live asset. So that's all you need to check this and if you go back to entitlements you still see if you click on the general tab that you now have one policy you don't have an asset because you don't here have an account that's okay you don't see the account, you have it here, but you don't see it in the general tab. Just simply click on the refresh button over here. And of course you need some user to assign, so otherwise it would not be accessible to, to any user. If I just click on the user tab, I simply can assign myself to that request policy. And now I'm assigned to that entitlement. So everything now is configured as it should be. And just to test this, just click on the on the home icon here, place a request with new request, and you're going to see that you now see in the list of accessible stuff my asset on this defined network address for my platform type other that we have created before. And then you can click on next, click on that asset, and then you can submit the request to have the password listed out if you want, but it works. Now it's available. You could click on this one here and just show password. And that's the password I've set manually. Very easy, very straightforward.